You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast, broadcasting from sunny South Florida. Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome to the program, everyone. I'm Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. All right. This is not clickbait, and I'm not being funny or cute. I'm being serious as a heart attack. I stand with George Santos, and I know that he is a liar, okay? And I know a lot of people are wondering, because I've been the last few days talking about George Santos and say, hey, I, I'm standing with George Santos, and people are like, you're supporting a liar. I was like, I know. And they're like, you can't do that. Listen, I stand with George San- uh, Santos, who we know is a liar, because he is MAGA. And I'm going to stand by anyone who is MAGA so long as they don't do something that hurts someone or violates our MAGA principles, like Marjorie Taylor Greene may be doing with her endorsement of Kevin McCarthy. All right. And uh, everything they've accused him of lying about, he, it, is, it is true that he is lying. And every time I pick up my phone, there's another story there with more lies that George Santos has told. And the stories are all true. He's a liar. But this is the first time I've ever heard of a member of Congress being investigated criminally, which he is. There's a district attorney investigating George Santos because they lie. All these politicians in Washington lie. I'll give you a few examples, okay? Elizabeth Warren not only lied about being an Indian, okay? She received a lot of financial benefit for it. When she was a professor, it was either Harvard or Yale. I always forget which one. I think it was Harvard. Yeah, they're both the same. It doesn't matter. Same, same crew of people. She was listed on the faculty as a Native American professor. There was financial benefit to that for her. And she knowingly lied, yeah, by she the way. So, she knowingly lied. So, yeah, so that is, that's criminal in that there was financial gain that she made from that lie of being an Indian. Was she prosecuted? No. And she's still in the Senate. Ilhan Omar of the squad, there are lots of questions that have been documented about her marriage that got her the documents to enter the United States and become a legal resident, et cetera, et cetera. Um, Are they running her out of Congress? Is she being charged? Joe Biden's entire life has been a resume of lies. And even still today, at the age of 632, He's adding new lies to his resume all the time. Just a few days ago, he talked about when he was accepted to the U.S. Naval Academy at Annapolis, which never happened. The reason they're going after George Santos for his lies is because he's gay MAGA. The only truthful thing that there's two truthful statements that George Santos has made. Okay, he's gay and he's MAGA. That's it. And, you know, we've got to stand by our MAGA people. The reason that they're trying to run George Santos out of Congress and the reason they're investigating him criminally is not because of the lies he told. They're all liars. It's because he slipped in under the radar. He ran. I never heard of this guy till a couple of days ago. And no one else did either, even though he was running. He now uh, everybody's heard. Of exactly. Him. He's a household name. He put on the Republican congressional candidate uniform, blue suit, red tie. Went out and talked, said he worked for Goldman Sachs, they, he, and boom, he, he got elected. No one, he was under the radar. No one knew who he was. And then when they found out he's gays for Trump, that he's gay MAGA, they're out to get him out of Congress because they don't want MAGA there. And, and here's, here's the thing. Here's the thing. All his lies, none of them matter. All that matters is that he's MAGA and he stands with Trump. Now, there's a new story that's out today, and uh, there's, there's more into this story. Um, and, and the Daily Mail actually has a, uh, an email address on this news story where you can email the Daily Mail if you have any information about George Santos. So meaning if you have any more lies he's told. Yeah. If you, want, if you can corroborate any more. Exactly. Um, Congressman-elect George Santos also lied about attending a prestigious prep school, according to a new report, as he's come under multiple criminal investigations for lying about major portions of his biography. Okay, now this prep school thing. He lied about a lot of things, that he worked for Goldman Sachs, this prep school thing. Getting elected to Congress, this is a club. It is a very exclusive club. And most of the things that he lied about when running were so that he appeared to be in this club that you have to be in to get elected. 
Additionally, newly resurfaced tweets show that Santos, who was a Brazilian American, lied about having Jewish heritage. He said he was a Jew. Well, I got news for you. Okay. If men can identify and say they're a woman and vice versa and all these things, why can he not identify as being a Jew? And I'm serious about that. Uh, He lied about having Jewish heritage. He claimed in July 2020 that he was biracial, meaning Caucasian and black. Okay, what about Rachel Donzel, who was the white girl that was the head of the NAACP in California? She identified as African-American. Santos also said in July 21 in a tweet that 9-11 claimed my mother's life, he said. He claimed his mother died in the September 11th terrorist attacks and that she worked in one of the towers. Um, he, he, so, yeah, so that's, uh, you know, these, are, these lies are pretty outrageous. Um, an obituary for Santos's mother said she died in December 2016, 15 years after the 9-11 terrorist attacks. Um, why, why do you think he's being so pathological about these things? Well, he may have a sickness. He may have a sickness. That doesn't concern you. I, I don't care. He's, he, you know, a member of Congress, all they do, all I need them to do is vote mm-hmm. yay or nay. When it's when well, it's the, the right thing to think? do. I'm curious. Well, they really just elected him. They, but, but now that they know. It's too late. Two more years. There's what, an election in two do? years. I mean, they're mm-hmm. investigating him for what? For lying. Like they all do. Well, we, I have a list of some of Joe Biden's lies. Well, let, let me finish up with this. Then we'll get to Biden's lies. We'll wonder lines. why he was never okay. investigated for it. <clears throat> okay. Now, now, when I say that I stand with Santos, I really, truly mean that. I don't want you guys to think I'm joking or, or clickbaiting or trying to be cute or anything else. Democrats stick with each other even when they drive off bridges and leave women to drown in cars. That's true. Bill Clinton was uh, physically and sexually assaulting women, and he was elected and reelected. You know, the uh, uh, George Bush and Dick Cheney are being honored today. They're war criminals who lied about weapons of mass destruction. That, that was a big lie. I, I don't it know. It actually cost people their uh, lives. Millions of people's lives have been affected. I don't know how many have died around the world because of their war criminal lies. Now that should be investigated. You know, so, you know, give me a break. You know, he, his lies are lies, but he's MAGA. We've got to do what the opposition does. See, if MAGA wants to win... And if we want to grow, we've got to stick by our people no matter what, okay? Now, if they violate, you know, uh, loyalty to Trump, the MAGA movement, or they hurt someone, you know, in, in those kind of ways, break the law, hurt someone, then, then you know, okay. But with these, these lies are harmless lies. I mean, don't you think, I mean, when you think about it, it and, and most of the lies are just so he sounded as if he was part of the elite that gets elected to Congress. So are you okay with Joe Biden's lies? Why not? There's no, pun- the Democrats don't seem to mind. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this, I'll never vote for Joe Biden. Never have, never will. Here's an article from October in Fox News. It says here, mm-hmm. President Biden's decades-long history of falsehoods are most recently evidenced by a, a euphemism-filled New York Times report that referred to outright fabrications as folklore. And factual edges shaved off. <laughs> that's, a, that's a new one. He shaves off the factual edges. The Times noted Biden had lied about being raised in a Puerto Rican home. Yeah. Community at home, his academic record, his life story, being arrested when protesting civil rights, being arrested in South Africa, pinning a silver star on a Navy captain, and even the timeline when he rode on Amtrak to visit his sick mother. He told other unbelievable stories that the Times failed to mention, such as the claim he confronted a gang leader called Corn Pop. In the 60s. But instead of calling Biden a liar, they say he embellished narratives, sometimes only loosely based on the facts, to weave together his political identity. Okay, I guess that's what Joe Santos is doing. He's weaving his political identity. That's exactly right. Let me tell you, if they investigated every politician that lied, you'd be like 98 percent, I would say. The only if they if they threw out every politician that lied out of Washington, the only person in Washington percentage be uh, the only person in Washington would be Donald Trump. And, you know, Hillary Clinton, I I remember Hillary Clinton um, claimed that she was named after Sir Edmund Hillary, who was the first person to climb Mount Everest. He climbed Mount Everest a couple of years after she was born. Um, She claimed to have been under enemy fire in Bosnia. I remember that. That's right. And and, and all these things. She lied all the time. I'm not saying that lying is okay, but in this case, it is because they're holding him to a standard that they've held no one to before. 
And and the reality because he's MAGA. It, he's because he's gay MAGA. Yeah. It's two. That's a double white. That's a double whammy. He's gay and he's MAGA. They can't handle it. And they cannot handle. It. So that's the real reason they're after him. So if you're MAGA, you need to do what I'm doing, and that is stand by George Santos. You know, I'm not so sure he's going to make it through this because, you know, uh, we have a slim majority in in the House of Representatives. But what and can they do? They're trying to stop him from being sworn in. They, this Based ha- on what? That he lied? Uh, that he d- committed crimes. Yeah, they, they did this once before. It's not a crime. When Obama was elected president, he gave up his Senate seat. Remember um, the governor of Illinois, Blagojevich? Mm. Uh, sold the seat to a guy, and they wouldn't let him sit in the Senate. He went to Washington. They wouldn't swear him in. They wouldn't. I can't remember the guy's name. He was black. And Blagojevich went to prison for that. Mm-hmm. That's that's the kind of move they're trying to make with George Santos. They're trying to get Kevin McCarthy not to swear him in. And I'm going to tell you, mm. we need to stick with MAGA. What he, do you think Kevin he's McCarthy's no going one. to do? Because we know Kevin McCarthy's not MAGA. He's I, a snake. I, I think he won't swear him in. I think what they're doing yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. is they are launching this so-called investigation to give Kevin McCarthy an excuse. Yeah. You know, he right, his idea. Have, like, you know, you got to understand the government is really run by a bunch of lawyers. A lot of them are attorneys and they think that way. And they're really into setting precedent and it's laying that groundwork. So I think they're launching this so-called investigation to give a basis, to give a reason for Kevin McCarthy to say – I can't swear him in. He's under investigation or, you know, the, and he'll appoint somebody, you know, can he might appoint well, someone who's on his side. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because the Santos guy's not going to vote for him well, for speaker. Well, would you think? I, I I would not be I surprised. I mean, I'm sure Kevin McCarthy's now, concerned about Now, we got that. a little more information here. Now, this is something you were telling me about. Here's another, th- another lie. Um, but I don't care. I am still standing with George Santos. Okay. There's a photograph of him. At Mar-a-Lago, last, I think it's last New Year's Eve, with his then fiance, now husband. But public records show that until 2019, he was married to this uh, Brazilian woman. That's right. So we don't even know if he's gay or straight. He may be lying about being gay. Maybe he's non-binary. You know how much the liberals Who knows? love that. Who knows? Well, I'll disagree with you on this. Or maybe I don't, he's I don't bisexual. like any liar. I don't like any liar. I don't like liars either. And I, and I don't support. And I don't. But all, most politicians lie. You're not going to support what you're saying. George Santos. Well, he's not in my district, so I don't really care. But I, but if he was, I don't he's know. Mad. I mean, I don't like people that just outright lie Kathy, they so all lie. much. They all lie. I agree with you on that, but and I understand what you're saying. But that doesn't mean that we should condone this guy. But I don't think he's doing anything illegal. I don't think he should be investigated for it. Unless, Agreed. you know, I mean, they let Elizabeth Warren do her thing. Now, yeah. she did, they didn't investigate her. That was really because she kind of cooked her own goose with that. She said, I'll take a DNA test like an idiot. And she was like, less, Trump was more Indian than her. Uh, you know, most of us were. So she kind of did that to herself. But I don't think they should be investigating him. I think no. what you do is you let the voters know he's he'll be up for reelection in two years. And they can decide in two years if they want to keep him around. That's yeah. all. But they can't investigate you. Are they going to start investigating everybody for lying now? Are yeah. they setting this precedent so, here that if you're a liar, you the cops come after you? That's, that's what they're – now, yesterday, the Nassau County District Attorney, Ann Donnelly, who's a Republican, announced that her office had opened a probe into Santos's pol- uh, fabrications – May before his victory. Oh, my goodness. Um, the resident, this is what she says. The residents of Nassau County and other parts of the 3rd District must have an honest and accountable representative in Congress. No one is above the law, and if a crime was committed, uh, we will prosecute it. There's if it, no crime. Um, he's scheduled to be sworn in on January 3rd, so that next week. And um, Unless he, yeah. unless, I'm not sure how this works. If he lied on his resume or lied on his application or whatever they do to file that they're going to run. I'm sure they have to fill out a bunch of paperwork. So if he lied on that, can they remove him based on those grounds? And I think they will. I think they could. Yeah. And I think McCarthy will be well, happy this. to do it because so, he's, yeah. he's going to want to put in somebody else that will vote for him. So not only does he have the Nassau District Attorney investigating him, federal prosecutors with the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Eastern District of New York are probing into Santos's finances and his financial disclosures. Uh, so, you know, listen, a member of the House is only there for two years. Mm-hmm. Let his district decide. 
Exactly. Let his district decide. And, you know, most of these lies that he told could have been figured out in a, in a Google search if anyone cared to, to look into it. And um, I think the people that elected him did what I did. They voted straight Republican, and they didn't care anything about this guy's I background. He won't get reelected again because I, I, don't, I don't think people like to be, even though I know most politicians lie, but I could be wrong. I mean, you know, there's a lot of politicians that get reelected over and over again, and, and they, they're known liars. But, well, uh, Kevin McCarthy's a liar. Yeah. You know, Ke- Kevin McCarthy was conspiring to remove Trump as president and make Pence president after January 6th, yeah. okay? I mean, that's that's some dishonest stuff here. Look at how General Milley took the nuclear weapons controls away from President Trump after January 6th Mm -hmm. and was meeting with the Speaker of the House. They were conspiring like seven days in May. You know, where's those investigations? Look at look at everything that was revealed about Biden and his crimes and Hunter Biden's laptop from hell. Where where's the where's the federal prosecutors arresting them? You know, here we got Hunter was lying on um, applications to buy weapons, okay? That, that, that would send a normal person to prison. This guy lied about going to a prep school and, and some other minor. Who cares? He's just not a part of the club, and, and they want to get him out because they think the one truthful thing he said is that he's MAGA. We don't even know that he's gay now uh, because he was married to a woman until 2019. Well, I don't think McCarthy's going to swear him in because he's under investigation. I think he's going to use oh, that my excuse. Goodness. Kathy, when, okay, when Bill, I could be wrong. But, I remember you know. when Bill Clinton was being impeached in 1998, the Democrats in the house were rallying together every vote against impeachment they could. And I remember I saw his story on the evening news. It was like the CBS evening news. They were finding members of Congress that were under criminal investigations being held up here and there, people in in, um, hospitals and everything else uh, to go and vote uh, no on impeachment. There's that one senator, Menendez. He was on trial for taking bribes. Now, he was acquitted, but during the whole trial, they didn't say that he had to uh, resign from the Senate. And by the way. He, he's since been reelected since that trial. Mm-hmm. And he was up on bribery charges. Remember that? Yep. And he had a whole big trial. And they didn't say that he should uh, resign from the Senate. I'm sure if, if, uh, we went, if we went online or thought about it for a few minutes, we can think of all kinds of lies and misrepresentations and crimes that have been committed by members of Congress. This is the first time one of them is, is being held accountable for it. And it's because he's viewed, we don't know if he's gay now. So he may, he may be straight for Trump, but he's for Trump. And that's, that's the one truth uh, of his background that we know is true, at least they think is true. So they're trying to stop this Well, guy. we certainly need the, the bodies in Congress that support Trump. And he's one of them, especially since they're go- – I, I, I promise you this guy is not going to be well, voting for McCarthy for the speakership. Well, he, may, he, could, he should make a deal, I guess. But, you know, and here's the other thing. Because he hasn't been sworn in yet – they would have a special election in that district in New York is what I'm guessing. Mm-hmm. And because of this bad press for the Republican, they'd probably get a Democrat elected and, and that seat instead of a Republican. Oh, my goodness. You know, and we've got a very slim majority. So, you know, there's all kinds of scheming going on. So I just want to say this one more time. I stand with George Santos. I know that he's a liar. You should stand with George Santos, too. How did his lies become – Uncovered. Like New York who, Times did, did a story. Start? Just Google. But I'm wondering who tipped them off. Somebody tipped probably Kevin McCarthy. Who knows? Somebody tipped them off. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. One day we'll find out what was going on. Now, listen, we're going to take a quick break. There's a lot more to talk about. Don't go anywhere. You're listening to the Brian Craig Show podcast. I'm Brian Kathy. My wife always joins me. And of course, the Brian Craig Show podcast is available on all podcast platforms, all of them. If there's a podcast platform, we are on it. And also, uh, we do upload the show on my YouTube channel, Brian Craig Show on YouTube. And when we unload, uh, when we unload, when we unload we our opinions on the show. When we upload the podcast to YouTube, uh, what we do is we, we upload it with a live premiere, which means there's a live chat room, just like I have in the morning when I'm live streaming on the radio. So if you subscribe to my YouTube channel, Brian mm-hmm. Craig Show on YouTube, and you catch the live premieres of the podcast, uh, there's a live chat room with a, uh, a very overly opinionated group of people, and Kathy and I are in there chatting, too, in the chat room, and uh, you can get the podcast there as well. All right, let's take that quick break. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. 
Are you looking for cute and comfortable clothing for your child? Look no further. Bister Shop, it's all one word, on Etsy.com has you covered. Bister Shop on Etsy is stocked with a wide variety of colorful, toddler, and children's clothing. You're sure to find an outfit your child will love to wear. Bister Shop on Etsy focuses on providing high-quality, fine designs made for your little one to stay comfortable and stylish. When you visit the shop, make sure to check out their colorful t-shirts, zip-up hoodies, long sleeve pajamas, and baby body. Suits. All the designs are eco friendly and responsibly sourced and made of 100% organic cotton material. With pass down quality, they encourage you to give your outgrown clothes to someone you love to help us all protect our blue home. Visit Bister Shop, that's all one word, B I S T E R on Etsy, and start shopping right now. If your business is building better bodies, there's a resource you need to check out. ExerciseAnimatic.com ExerciseAnimatic.com gives you access to over 1,000 exercise animations in super high quality for every type of exercise. Bodybuilding, weightlifting, powerlifting, cross exercise, stretching, gym exercises, and that's just the beginning. This is the largest fitness stock database there is, and you can use these 4K clips for your freelance or business career or your personal use. The videos can help you increase your global reach, attract new clients. They're also perfect for your website and fitness app, too. And new videos are added each and every month. It's time to upgrade your fitness business, and doing it is easy by visiting ExerciseAnimatic.com. That's ExerciseAnimatic.com. Add some warmth and personality to your home with a throw blanket from Throw Blanket Wall Art. Throw blankets make it easy to add the cozy finishing touches to your home decor. Throw blankets from Throw Blanket Wall Art are made of 100% high quality cotton. They're made to order, carefully woven, and shipped straight to your doorstep. When you visit their online store at throwblanketwallart.com, browse their selection of beautiful throw blankets, like their best selling botanical woven throw blanket, their boho floral throw blankets, butterfly cat blankets and many more stunning designs and patterns every blanket is extra durable and machine washable you can use them as an outdoor throw on your patio a wall tapestry a couch throw or bedspread they're good as a beach or picnic blanket too it's up to you throw blankets are a fun and stylish way to stay comfortable and they make the perfect thoughtful gift for someone special in your life home is where your blanket is shop the gorgeous throw blankets from throw blanket wall art visit throwblanketwallart.com to order yours right now throw blanket wall art.com you are listening to the brian craig show podcast broadcasting from sunny south florida brian is joined by his wife and co-host kathy follow brian on social media at brian craig show.com and now brian and kathy welcome back everyone i'm brian craig always joined by my wife and co-host kathy all right now uh, earlier this week, we were talking libs of TikTok came forward, mm-hmm. and um, she talked about how Governor Ron DeSantis here in Florida had offered the governor's mansion as a safe house to her because of all this harassment she was getting from Democrats. And Ron DeSantis is getting involved in the drag movement or against the drag movement. Now listen to this. Governor Ron DeSantis's administration has launched an investigation into a holiday – that's liberal speak for Christmas – Drag show. Florida's Department of Business and Professional Regulation on Wednesday announced it was investigating a holiday-themed drag show in South Florida. And this is where we are. This is in our community. Yep. It said the department had received multiple complaints alleging a December 26th performance of drag fans, a drag queen Christmas, was sexually explicit and was marketed to children. The department is actively investigating this matter, including video footage and photographs from the event, said a statement from the department circulated by Brian Griffin, a press secretary for Governor Ron DeSantis. Uh, The statement said that the department plans to share any evidence collected in its investigation with the State Department of Law Enforcement for criminal liability. The Broward Center for the Performing Arts, which we've been to many, many many times. times. It's a beautiful place right on the... Right on the Intracoastal in Fort Lauderdale. It's a beautiful performing center. I performed in a play there when we first met. When we first, yeah. That's where I met your mom there, where I met your mother. That's where you actually met my mother? And your stepdad, yeah. That's right. And then then we went out to dinner with um, Al Goldstein. And if you don't know who Al Goldstein was, (laughs) look him up. Well, we didn't go to dinner. 
with him. I don't want people to get the wrong idea. We here. went to dinner with everyone from the we, play. Exactly. And he was in the play. And he was in the play with you. We didn't go to dinner with him. It was a whole bunch of people. It was people a whole bunch of people. At a restaurant. But he was sitting next to me because I was in the play with him and he was very <laughs> exactly. famous. Exactly. You guys did, in the, fact, Al did Goldstein, your scenes together. Al Goldstein and I had a scene in this play together. He was a very well known person. He's passed away. They used to, Danny DeVito used to play him on Saturday Night Live. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, but, but anyway. Um, the Brower Center for the Performing Arts, the Fort Lauderdale venue that hosted the holiday drag performance mm. at the center of Florida's investigation, may be at risk of losing its liquor license. Oh, boy, that's huge. Oh, yeah. All those intermissions, every, oh, yeah. uh, the that's overpriced big money. wine. Oh, yeah. yeah. They sell a lot of alcohol during the intermission. Mm-hmm. For and they sure. may lose their ability to operate as a business in Florida. And let me tell you, this, oh, my gosh. this Performing Arts Center is massive. All the touring Broadway shows it's play beautiful, there, beautiful and it's, it's big money. A spokesman for the Broward Center for the Performing Arts said the venue as of late Wednesday had not been contacted by Florida state officials. According to a spokesperson for the Broward Center, a, admission to a drag queen Christmas was limited to those 18 years or older unless accompanied by a parent. Mm. You know, you can't uh, have a strip club open to people only 18 years of age and older. Unless they're no. escorted by a parent. <laughs> well, could you imagine? You know? Yeah, exactly. I, I still don't understand the parents that go to these things. Well, Fort Lauderdale. I, mean, I just don't get it. Okay, Fort Lauderdale is um, is where I grew up. <laughs> yeah, okay? me too. My mother lives in Fort Lauderdale right. in the house in which I grew up. I lived in the suburbs and, of Fort Lauderdale. Brian lived in Fort Lauderdale. Yeah, and Fort Lauderdale, in my opinion, is the best city in all of florida it has the best beach in florida i love i it's love fort lauderdale it's a great place. we don't live in fort lauderdale now and it, it it and i and i really do miss fort lauderdale living there it's not too far away but like i don't know. think it's as good as it used to be though yeah it's good it's, our our cruise that we're taking yeah. next month steve Kane and i it's beautiful down by the water yeah. just beautiful our cruise steve and i are taking next month with listeners leaves out of fort lauderdale's port everglades it's a beautiful city however the government of fort lauderdale is run by gays well, you, it's it, Fort Lauderdale has become a gay mecca. Yeah, it, it's second to San Francisco. Yeah, so I the, mean, there's the, a huge, so, huge gay community. So there. the parents that take their kids there are gay parents, and mm. and they don't see or gay or they're they're, they're they, gay parents. They they're want to expose their children to that. They're for gay men and reason. women that have kids, and they take their kids. I'm to sure the, some straights went to to the drag queen Christmas, and they don't understand that it's inappropriate. To ensure viewers were aware of the adult themes and content of the show, ticket buyers were informed directly through a know-before-you-go message that is sent out via email in advance of most shows hosted by the Broward Center. Uh, In a Wednesday email to the Orlando Philharmonic Plaza Foundation, okay, the Drag Queen Christmas Tour venue operators were warned, okay, by the state that minors should be barred from the performance, which uh, is of a sexual nature. Oh, my gosh. It must the, be pretty bad. I mean, they, this is pre, you know, uh, did people take underage children to the vagina monologues when it was on tour years I, ago? I saw the vagina monologues. No, there were okay. no children there. In, in fact, sh- I'm pretty sure you had to be over 18. In the warning that the state gave in advance of the performance to the producers, they said, if you allow children to attend the drag fans drag show at your facility, you were putting your license in jeopardy. The you inve- told them this? The state of Florida department that's now investigating them. Oh, boy. The investigation is the latest in a series of steps taken by Republican leaders, including Governor Ron DeSantis, to crack down on drag performances accused of being sexually explicit and inappropriate for young audiences. DeSantis in July filed a complaint against Our House, a Miami restaurant, after it hosted a drag brunch event where children were present, citing a 1947 Supreme Court ruling that men impersonating women in a suggestive and indecent fashion constitutes a public nuisance. And I know people say, well, that's an old law. Well, it, it well, I doesn't. Guess the, I guess even in the 40s, they had this problem. You know, a lot of laws are old. It doesn't mean they're wrong. You know, the, the law against murder is an old law, right? Exactly. Um, having kids involved in this is wrong, Governor DeSantis said during a press conference. That is not consistent with our law and policy in the state of Florida. And it is disturbing this trend in our society to try to sexualize these young people. The efforts by Governor Ron DeSantis, a prospective GOP presidential candidate in 2024, and other Republican leaders in states across America have also sparked fears of inciting acts of violence against the LGBTQ community. 
There's no acts of violence being no. threatened here. Okay, this is, th- this is what's going on. Somehow, this drag queen thing with children has become a fad among um, gay parents. There's a lot of gay parents now. Like, when our daughter was young, Kathy and I, like, we, we hired people. Like, we had um, uh, Blue from Blue's Clues and another actor come to our birthday party Just at school once. Steve. You know, and we did things like that. And what's, what's happened in our society nationwide is that gays are out like they never were before and have parents. I mean, and our parents, I should say. that. Of course, they have parents, but they are parents. And for the first time at this point in America, you have the largest number of out-of-the-closet gay men and women who have young children than you've ever had. And in their world, drag queens are a normal thing, and they don't see anything wrong with it. I don't think you should assume that all the parents that went are gay parents. There are straight. Who parents. else is going to drag Brian, shows? There with are kids. straight liberal parents taking kids to absolutely, drag shows. Absolutely, absolutely. They it's a badge of they want to educate That's their children crazy. on this. Well, they're cra- we're talking liberals here. Now, when I was a I kid, mean, come on, things were a little different. And some of you guys out there that are my age may have had this experience. But my dad used to take me to bars, but they weren't they weren't strip bars or anything. They were like regular bars, and um, I never had that experience. Yeah, when I was like a kid, like <laughs> like ten years old, nine. You know, my dad would take me to a bar. Well, I, and, I did go to Holiday and, Isles in the Keys. I guess that counts as a bar. Well, I'd be at a bar and and I'd be sipping from his beer. I had an uncle who passed away. Uh, my uncle Verge. And I used to, uh, when I'd come to, before I lived in Florida and I would come down here during the summer, he was my grandmother's brother-in-law. And um, I would stay with them sometimes with my grandmother during the summers. And he would take me out to the pool bars in Fort Lauderdale and I would drink yeah, his I beers guess I did and stuff that with like that. my dad too. Now that I think and about I it. don't think people take young kids to bars and let them drink their beers anymore like they used to. Who but knows? but that that makes you a man, you know. That's part of growing up, going to bars, drinking beer with your dad, your uncle. That's a cool thing. But what they're doing now, you have people that are parents that have no understanding of what is appropriate or inappropriate because they themselves are inappropriate, mm-hmm. and they don't understand that what they are doing is wrong and what they're doing um, because the norms of society have changed. Well, no, no, dealing, no, 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 no. They're outside the norms of society. No, I know. The, the, we're not in our 20s or 30s. Okay, we're coming from a different perspective. But for young parents that have been raised on social media and exposed to a total, they've had a totally different upbringing than we have. Totally different. It's like night and day. To them, it is normal, is what I'm saying. And the norms have changed. Brian, when you and I, you said it yourself, we're kids. Gays having kids was not normal. It was not a thing. Gay marriage was not a thing. Now that's considered a normal part of society, and the norms have changed, and you have straight couples as well as gays, and this is part of their new normal. And to go to take their kids to a drag show, they're only enlightening their children. That's how they see it. But but, but if this show built itself as sexual in nature, uh, then they definitely should be in trouble and that's why they're investigating it, investigating it, and they should be in trouble for allowing children at all to come to this. And they're going to go after the the, yeah. per, the Broward Center because they were they hosted it. Mm-hmm. That was the venue, and they didn't have to allow children. They could have carded everybody at the door, and they could have said, "You can't come in. You you're know, under eighteen. You know, th- a couple things. But here. they let them in. Um, I mean, if you go to a bar, like you said, you went with your dad. Yeah. But the and, and say the cops showed up and they caught you drinking beer. That bar could lose their license. Yeah. They would get in trouble. Now, That's on them. Now, the um, mayor of Fort Lauderdale has been gay, you know, eh, eh, over the year. They, the, the last few mayors, there's always been gay mayors lately. And during the COVID lockdowns, the mayor of Fort Lauderdale on our local news used to really tick me off. Mm. He would, he would, the, the gay mayor, he's a mayor who is gay of Fort Lauderdale, would walk around the uh, bar area which is a very nice upscale area, bar and restaurant district. On, it's it's a uh, Las Olas Boulevard. Oh, yeah, near very the nice. Florida. Very nice. During the COVID lockdowns, he was walking through the restaurant bar district, tourist district of Fort Lauderdale with the um, food and building ex- inspectors and the police 
shutting down restaurants and ticketing them for serving alcohol and mm. things and, and food and being open during the COVID lockdowns. And he almost, to me, I, I, I saw the local news following him around from restaurant to restaurant. It what pissed a, me what off. A, and what and, a rotten thing to and do. And it made him feel good. Uh, doing it. He thought he was do, uh, this higher calling, especially since Governor DeSantis was against lockdowns. That's how liberals are. It was more about DeSantis and Trump being against lockdowns. Yeah. And he th- I- I'd like to know where that mayor was during the uh, drag show Christmas thing for the children at the city. He was in, probably city. in the show. I wouldn't be surprised. He was probably in the audience. He's probably backstage. Now, also, a lot of people don't know this about Florida. Florida was the last state to allow gays to adopt. In fact, Gay people could not adopt children in Florida until 2010, okay? And every other state in the union you could adopt if you were gay except Florida. And um, that did not happen easy, and it was done through the court system, not the legislative branch, uh, that allowed gays to adopt in the state of Florida. And, in fact, I don't know if the law is on the books still. I don't know, but gays can adopt in Florida now, and it was and, – and a lot of people were against gay adoption. I never really got involved in that issue too much because Steve and I are very pro-adoption. Our, uh, Kathy and I, our daughter's adopted. Steve has six children who are adopted. My mother's adopted. And um, we're always very pro-adoption. But what we're seeing here with the, the drag queen story time with gray, gay parents around the country is one of the big dangers of gay adoption. And I remember years ago... Uh, there was a – Rosie O'Donnell, when she was like a big star, used to do this gay cruise every year. And there was a documentary. Yeah, I th- and their families, yeah. gays and their kids. Yeah, I, remember that. I, th- I think it was on HBO. But Rosie yeah. O'Donnell did a documentary on her gay cruise. And they interviewed – it was and, the, and, the, and people were on the cruise with their children, their whole families. They interviewed this daughter of two lesbians. She wasn't a – Adopted by the two lesbians, one of the lesbians got pregnant somehow with her. I don't know if it was from a man or art, uh, that she was involved with or uh, artificial insemination. I can't remember. It's been many years. This, but this girl um, had two moms. One of them was her birth mother. The other mother adopted her. And she told this story on the Rosie O'Donnell documentary that was so strange and so disturbing and what was disturbing about – I'll tell you what the story was in a moment. But was, what was disturbing about it is that the, the two mothers think this story was cute. And Rosie O'Donnell and the people that were making her documentary thought this was a cute story. Okay, so here's – here, and this was in this Rosie O'Donnell documentary on her gay cruise. I'm sure this is available somewhere. And you can find this and you can verify what I'm saying. And I remember this like it was yesterday. So they interview this girl. She's got the two lesbian moms. She's straight. And she's talking about she woke up one night and she had a nightmare and she was disturbed and she went to her mom's about her nightmare. And in her uh, nightmare, well, I guess it was a dream, but, you know, she thought it was a nightmare. She had a dream that she had a boyfriend. And um, she thought there was something and this girl thought there was something wrong with her because she was kissing a boy. And she woke up. She had thought she had a nightmare. She was upset. She went to her two lesbian moms and said, I had this terrible dream. I was, you know, with a boy. I was kissing a boy. And she thought something was wrong with her. And they said, no, 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 no. Some people love people of the opposite sex. Some people love people of the same sex. And that's when my opinion on gay adoption was like, whoa, this is a bad idea. Because that what they told her was true. That girl was being brought up in such a strange home. Mm. She thought something was wrong with her because she was attracted to boys. And I thought, wow, the norms of these families are really wackadoodle. Well, yeah. so, so but the, at least they told her that she wasn't strange. But as far as that's at least what they said. Yeah, but a normal parent would be concerned. If your kid came to you and thought they had a nightmare like that, you say, you know, that's not a nightmare. That's like a, you know, oh, the wet dream, I guess. <laughs> She had. I don't know what you it call it. It doesn't matter. But it's, Let me it's, tell you, it it's very matter. strange, Kathy. Uh, it doesn't matter if she grew up in a straight or gay home. Just living with Rosie O'Donnell itself is messed up as your mother. I mean, her kids, like, you know, are not happy well, with her. Well, yeah. So what, what, She's got her own problems, so when as the, Trump would say. You know, so 
back to this thing that Ron DeSantis is involved in with this drag show. This is a big show. issue for him, by the way. This is, this is a big issue. Well, yeah, it is a very big issue. Yeah, so Ron DeSantis is making a, a big thing against the drag shows, and if he runs for president, um, it's going to be a big part of his campaign. Um, and I'm glad he's taking this on here in Florida because things have to be handled. There's a lot of inappropriate business going on. Now, I, I, I want to ask you guys in the audience something that involves Ron DeSantis, okay? Um, the, early this morning, I was listening to Fox News when I was getting ready for work. They were, go, they were just praising, it seemed like for about 30 minutes, Ron DeSantis. Now, we're big fans of Ron DeSantis. I've met Ron DeSantis. Um, of course, we're in Florida. So we love Ron DeSantis as much as anyone can. But this is, this is what I, I want to ask you guys, okay? They were going on and on about how great Ron DeSantis is, and, 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 and I agreed with everything they were saying. But is Fox News Channel damaging Ron DeSantis by praising him so much? What I mean by that is, is the Fox News brand so damaged as being anti-Trump and anti-MAGA? The very fact that they're praising Ron DeSantis nonstop on Fox News, does that hurt him? Does it, does it make people say, ugh? Does it make, and I think it does. I think they're going over, I think they're going overboard by ignoring Trump and praising DeSantis as much as I love Ron DeSantis. But um, I just like to get your, your thoughts on that. You can let us know in the comments. Now, I want to take a moment to thank all of our Patreon supporters, including um, our new Patreon supporters. We have some new um, Patreon supporters. And if you would like to become a Patreon supporter, there is a link in the description of this and every episode. There's also a direct link on my website, briancraigshow.com. And there are perks to becoming a Patreon supporter. Our top Patreon supporters get a live, on-air thank you shout-out on each and every episode. So the names you will hear now are our top Patreon supporters. And there's some new names we're adding to the list of top Patreon supporters today. Uh, I want to thank Andrew and Connie. Christine. Gary, ETW, Chuck, D, Pamela, Rick, Nick, Macho, Rome, Wisconsin. And now we have some new names we're adding to the list. Mike, who just became a top Patreon supporter today, as well as Charles, Dave, and Paulette. Uh, also new uh, top Patreon supporters. Thank you all for your support. And again, if you'd like to become a Patreon supporter, there's a link in the episode description and a direct link on my website, briancraigshow.com. We'll take a quick break and be right back. Want to know where all the bodies are buried? Author Robert Allen Miltonberg holds the key to that question in his book, Pool Boy to the Mob, Everybody Out of the Pool. Author Robert Allen Miltonberg holds the key to that question in his book, Pool Boy to the Mob. Welcome to Mob Amy Beach. This book is a fictionalized account of Miltonberg working at a mob-owned Miami Beach hotel in the 70s. If you're a fan of The Godfather, Goodfellas, or The Sopranos, you will love this story. It's full of colorful characters and Wise cracking wise guys. It's a story with everything from Playboy bunnies and weaponized parrots to shattering the glass ceiling and getting away with murder, all in paradise. This is a wise guy tale you've never heard. Surrounded by pools, the trick for Bobby Moskowitz was not slipping in the one thicker than water. Bobby lived to tell the tales, and now you can read all about it. The funniest mob novel since Jimmy Breslin's The Gang That Couldn't Shoot Straight. Pool Boy to the Mob, Everybody Out of the Pool, from author. Robert Allen Miltonberg, available on Amazon. Order your copy right now. Beauty truly does come from within. Taking the right supplements can make all the difference. If you're experiencing thinning hair or brittle nails, there is a solution that can help. VivaShine Hair, Skin, and Nail Gummies. Available online at VivaShine.com. These gummies can help promote hair strength, support scalp health, and addresses the underlying causes of weak hair health, which can cause hair loss. They're all natural, third-party tested, safe, and effective. They taste great and contain no artificial sugars, artificial 
special flavors or colors. There's no soy, no dairy, no eggs or wheat, and they're non-GMO. These gummies contain a potent form of marine collagen, which can offer better absorption. The gummies also contain vitamins A, C, D, E, and the B vitamins we all need for better health. It's also proudly made right here in the USA and is now among the top five products on Amazon for the keywords marine collagen gummy and marine collagen gummies. It tastes great too, like sweet berry candy. Order your Viva Shine hair growth gummies with biotin online at vivashine.com and click the buy on Amazon button. Start the new year with thick, gorgeous hair, beautiful skin, and strong nails. vivashine.com. Effectively motivating, inspiring, and leading engineering professionals is about putting people first. In today's world, effectively motivating and managing highly intelligent technology professionals is challenging. Arm yourself with the knowledge and tools you need to become a highly effective and motivating engineering team manager with the book, Leadership with a Purpose, Motivating Your Engineers, by author Robert D. Murphy. Engineers working in the modern-day workforce are becoming increasingly more informed about their careers and employers, employee retention a full-time job. This is your guidebook to effectively motivating, inspiring, and leading professionals at all levels, keeping them happy and loyal to you. When you read Leadership with a Purpose, you'll learn how to establish a healthy engineering culture, how to cultivate it, and how to build trust with your teams. Give yourself a roadmap to successful leadership with Leadership with a Purpose, Motivating Your Engineers, from author Robert D. Murphy. Available in Kindle and paperback. Order your copy right now on Amazon. You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast, broadcasting from sunny South Florida. Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. All right, I want to talk about something that um, I didn't think needed clarification, but it does, okay? And uh, I, <laughs> I've i gotten some messages from people about this, and then I got a message from a very worried and upset listener about this who thinks there's some, some trouble afoot. And on Christmas, our daughter moved out of the house, okay? We mentioned this. She moved out on Christmas. And apparently, because I had mentioned that she moved out on Christmas, people thought something happened. Like there was some family problem and she got angry at us and just stormed out of the house on Christmas. And I'm on my own, mom. I'm on my own, dad. That is not the case. (laughs) Our daughter is um, 23 years old. In in a couple months, she will be 24 years old. And she um, has some friends. She moved out of the house. It just so happened uh, it was on Christmas because she was doing something with her friends involving Christmas, and uh, we had Christmas the night before because she was getting together with her friends and on Christmas later in the day, you know. So everything is okay. There was no, there was no conflict or anything. Our daughter is just planning this for a while. Our daughter's just growing up. Yeah, she's 23, yeah. and be 24 she's, she's been, tra- we've talked about it, she's been traveling to California yeah. for a couple of years now. She has friends out there, and she'll go for, you know, weeks at a time. Sometimes a month or two. Yeah, and, uh, and then come home for a while, for a few months, and then go back. And uh, so she's she's not officially moved or a California resident. She's going to stay there for a longer period, so I don't want it. She hasn't officially moved, but she's staying there for a longer yeah. period of time yeah. than normal. She has taken her stuff. She has her car, um, and she is planning on coming home, and she wants to come back and, well, and, coming, and, uh, not, and back in Florida. Not home to our home, but no, home, no, no. Back, back to, to Florida. Florida. And so a, she's yeah. just living there temporarily. So she's not becoming a but California she's moving resident. Out of the house. She's moving she's, out of the house. Yeah, she's moved out of the house, and she will be coming back to Florida in five yeah, or six months and, to live here. And I was surprised. Hopefully. I, w- I, I guess people thought there was some problem because she left, well, she on, left Christmas. on Christmas. And that was just part of her plan to do things with her friends. You know, it, you know, it happens. Yeah, she wanted older. to be there for the holidays. In fact, well, I knew something was afoot because she came up to me about a week before Christmas and she said, um, 
How do you guys feel about celebrating Christmas on Christmas Eve? Emily has always been dead set against that because yeah. I've always wanted to do that every year because I hate getting up Christmas morning early. I'm always tired. And, I'm, and I knew right as soon as she said that something was happening. And I said, well, why do you want to do that? She said, well, I'm thinking about going to California on Christmas. And, you know, Brian and I like to support our daughter. We don't want to stop her. I'm not going to make her feel guilty. And I said, that's fine. You know, if you want to do that, as long as we get to celebrate something. And we had a really nice Christmas Eve together. It was kind of a last minute thing. Uh, so she did leave Christmas afternoon. And uh, I will say when she when you took her to the airport, uh, I, I cried for about three hours after she left because it was just weird. She's gone to California before, but yeah. she did, this time she took all her stuff and her room was completely empty. And she spent about a week or so packing everything and getting everything going and, and everything's in boxes and boxed up and uh, we're shipping her car tomorrow and her car's full of her stuff. Yeah. And uh, so just seeing her room empty like that was really jarring and really like it's officially, you know, but like I said, she is planning on coming home in five or six months, but she's not moving back into the house ever again. She's welcome which to. Which is fine. Well, she's well, I don't know about to. ever again. It's well, like, I'm taking over her room, so she has an art studio, so she won't be able to, I guess. She's always welcome to move no, back she home. is always welcome to come but, back, even though we're getting rid of all of her furniture yeah, next she's, week. She's moving back to Florida yeah. in a Hopefully few months. Hopefully in her own place. Yeah, so I, I just was surprised that people thought there was a problem. I guess because of the Christmas Day thing. You know, yeah, that yeah, but out. she's been talking about it for a long time, and, uh, you know, she needs to grow up, and I'm proud of her, and I want her to be independent, and, uh, you know, she's at about the right age to leave the nest, but it, it's weird, you know, for us, but sometimes it's, but not in a bad way. Well, you know, th- th- this, is, this is the thing about your kids. I mean, I'd, I'd be happy with our daughter living here forever, you know, but your kids have to grow up and learn to support themselves because you're not going to be here forever. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so it's a good thing that they move on and can take care of themselves. You want them to do that. So, okay, so here's the story um, about three illegals. This is, this is really upsetting. Three illegal aliens, all with prior criminal arrest in the sanctuary state of Colorado, are accused of murdering a 30-year-old man in El Paso, Texas. Last month, they, got the, they have long names. I'm not going to read them through. But last month, the three illegal aliens, along with a fourth suspect, were arrested and charged with murdering a 30-year-old man, Manuel Hernandez Urubi, um, a fugitive wanted for kidnapping, second-degree strangulation, non-consensual sexual conduct, child abuse, third-degree assault, and harassment. Police alleged that the illegals um, took him to the Cheyenne Mountain and shot him. The three illegal aliens are accused of then dumping his body along the side of the road. Um, the illegal aliens each had their own criminal histories in the sanctuary state of Colorado before murdering this one man. Now, the guy they murdered was a, was a creep. There's no doubt about it. Um, one of the three illegals was previously convicted um, for drugs. It goes on and on, and they were released. Okay, now, all of these people are criminals and 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 all of that i get that but here here's here's the thing with all of these crimes and you hear these crimes all the time all of these crimes are preventable if donald trump were in the white house right now these criminals would not be here and the shooting would not have happened and all of these crimes are preventable crimes it's almost like i tell people it's like minority report with tom cruise where they had that agency of pre-crime they had those psychics and they could see crime before it happened these are all crimes that should not happen. Now, not everyone that comes here illegally is a criminal. Uh, I mean, they're, they're, everyone's a criminal because they're here illegally, and that's a crime. But, I mean, they're not here to do crime necessarily. But a lot of people that are very bad people in Latin America come to the United States because they can, build, they can attempt to build a whole new life. And they do what all criminals do. They reoffend. You know, there are people that do 20 years in prison – they get out, and 20 minutes later, they, they commit a crime, okay? I've heard stories of guys that do these long stretches for rape, and they get out of, they get out of prison, and, and uh, they rape somebody, sometimes the same day. You hear, you hear these stories, and back— Yeah, in, they reoffend. Yeah, back in the old days, the Old West, the American train robbers and stagecoach robbers used to flee to Latin America when they were wanted by, you know, the, 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 the marshals here in the United States because they could start a whole new identity like Butch and Sundance. 
They went to Bolivia, and what did they do? They went to Bolivia and went back to what they always did, robbing banks. And that's what happens. And, you know, when, you, when you're telling people that if you, if you come to the United States and you're undocumented, you're welcome to come here, which is what Biden is doing, you are whoever you say you are. You're the eight, your name is whatever you say it is. Your age is whatever you say it is. You're undocumented. So people come here that have very, very violent and long criminal records in Latin America, and they have a whole new start, and they, they re-offend. And, it, it may, and it's dangerous, and, and it's, it's got to be stopped. It's, well, it's yeah. not going to be stopped, that's for sure. Well, not with Joe Biden around. Did you see where Valerie Bertinelli posted um, a video footage of uh, some illegals trying to break into her home? Yes. That just happened. There was, there's been a whole string of robberies going on in California and people are getting footage and it's these gangs of illegals that are into very expensive homes. I mean, she's got money trying to break in and these are probably gated communities too, you know, that they're getting into pretty bold. Mm. One, one person, I don't, I don't think it was her, but one person had, um, video footage i saw it where this guy was walking up their driveway at night he had a whole bag full of like you know he had a crowbar or something in his hand and he had a full bag full of stuff ready to break in and then he saw the camera mm -hmm. these rich people everybody in america's got cameras maybe they don't have them like in mexico us. We or have in south too. america we got cameras and he looked up he saw the camera and he turned around I mean, they're mm -hmm. definitely a deterrent mm -hmm. um so definitely you should have them. We have them around our house, too. Most people do uh, these days. Uh, yeah, right now we're— That's we're, what's going on. We're podcasting on our back porch. We've got security cameras on our back porch. We've yep. got security cameras everywhere. Okay, now, th this is interesting. Ray Epps is in the news today. Oh. A uh, new story about Ray Epps. Let me read this because he actually talked. He's, he's talking. Ray Epps, who's 61 years old, uh, says his life has been turned upside down. After right-wing conspiracies began that he was working for the FBI as an informant at the Capitol riot, even though he told the January 6th committee that he went to D.C. on that trip to bond with his son. Ray Epps denied in his interview with the House panel that he's working for the FBI or uh, – no, let me reread that. Ray Epps denied in the interview with the House panel that he was working for the FBI at the time of the Capitol riot. Oh, Wasn't that an interesting uh, way to phrase it? Wow. That's not saying that he's, means he's retired. It, it does. It, it seems like he's retired. Well, OK, from working. I'll with tell the you FBI. this. One of the things about Ray. Epps, Interesting. If you go back and watch the video, he looks like a cop. He acts like a well, cop. what the hell is he doing going around? There's so many. And he was hurting people him, towards the hurting place. people towards the yeah. Capitol. Not just one group of people, <laughs> multiple. What the hell was he doing then? I, I don't very know. Very loudly but, and very openly, but by the this, way. But this line here, Ray Epps denied in his interview with the House panel that he was working for the FBI at the time of the Capitol riot. Boy, that's a lawyer's answer, huh? Isn't that something? Yeah. Um, he also listed a series of tragic events that have plagued him since the conspiracy was started nearly a year ago. This includes his wife being forced to move out of their home and live elsewhere in a series of death threats directed at himself and his family. He says, I can't have my wife live in our home, claiming he stays there to protect his property. Um, he also said during the interview that at no point was he in contact with law enforcement officials from the FBI the month before the Capitol riot. Well, that's very interesting. Maybe he was in contact with officials from the Capitol Police or the CIA or the NSA or the military intelligence or something. You know what I mean? There's other agencies mm -hmm. other than the FBI. The interview was released as part of a dump of transcripts on Thursday, which also included discussions with Don Jr., uh, Kim Guilfoyle, the D.C. mayor, uh, Stephanie Grisham, and others. Ray Epps said that he was forced to sell his business in Arizona and forced to live off of his FBI pension. Now, he doesn't say that far. It just yeah, it I'm says you. It says Ray Epps said that he was forced to sell his business in Arizona. That at the time is very interesting. Yeah, due, Why would he even say that? Due to the ongoing threats emerging from what he now claims are all lies. He claimed he used to respect some of the lawmakers and media outlets that now he blames for the conspiracies against him. He now classifies these individuals and those who believe the claims as crazy. We had a tour bus come by our home and business with all these whacked out people 
Epps told the panel, he's like, tour bus. Yeah, bag of bus to charge. A bag of tour bus. It's like in Hollywood. Is he going to be suing the media now, like and, every, like Kyle Rittenhouse? And, and this is the home where Ray Epps lived. That's hilarious. Uh, Ray Epps said he was getting emotional during his testimony. He has 38 grandchildren. Was wow. he Mormon? Um, That's a lot. Uh, who he told the January 6th panel have been picked on at school due to stories being floated about him. There are good people out there. That was in Washington, Apes, uh, Apes, Epps said in defense of those protesting. Um, that attracts all kinds of crazies. Uh, fringe right-wing outlets like Revolver News took selectively edited video clips of Ray Epps from the attack on the Capitol and used it to claim that he was a covert agent working for the FBI. Um, well, well I'd the, like, you know, what I'd like to know is – I'd like to hear from him, well, what the hell was he doing there? The, yeah, the videos of what him – What the hell was he doing in those videos? The videos of him – um, there's no context in which they look like anything than what they look exactly. like. He w- you can hear him talking. He's hurting people. To multiple groups of people well, in different locations, by the way. It wasn't just one group in one spot. It was like three or well, four different spots. Okay. Here's, here's the thing. When, when you're in the position he is in and people are making all these claims – you could immediately get rid of them. What I would do if mm-hmm. I were him yeah. is I would invite someone over from like the conservative news. I would invite, invite someone to, like like Tucker Carlson or Sean Hannity. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. They'd interview him Co- for sure. Conservative but mainstream at the same time. And I would explain to them that not only am I not FBI, I never have been – I've never been in any type of federal contact with any agency or worked for any agency. And I would go through my whole life story of photo albums and my job history yes. and all the places I ever worked but he hasn't done to that. show that I never had anything to do with the government or anything. And those rumors would end. And I said, I know I look like a cop and all this stuff, but I'm not, you know, and I was uh, I worked here and I worked there. I would take them around and show them. But the, you know what, Brian? But, but he's not doing anything like that. I, in the world we live in now, I don't think that would even do any good. People are really— It would help. Maybe, maybe not. Not with everybody. If, if Hannity People and Tucker did it, People are really into conspiracy theories. People are, are very suspicious on both sides. There's there, You should hear the conspiracy theories on the left. Like, oh. the things I hear from my brother are totally insane. Yeah. Um, and he's a big liberal. But, uh, you know, there's conspiracy theorists on both sides. People are going to believe what they want to believe— I do believe there was something very sus with this guy, as my daughter says, sus uh, with this guy. I mean, somebody who's going around on different different video feeds, different locations with different people, actively and very loudly and very uh, uh, assertively shuffling people to the Capitol uh, is very suspicious to me. Well, yeah. And- you know, and, and the considering that he has never been charged. Yeah. When all these other people have been, nothing's ever happened. And, he, to this and guy. you hear him doing it. And yeah, exactly. But actively saying, go, nothing, go do this. Nothing he showed would stop all the conspiracies. But if he sat down with Tucker and walked Tucker through with the town and showed all the places he's worked his whole life, showed photographs. Yeah, they could do a whole ethical think, thing on him. Uh, yeah. A lot of people would say, okay. I get, okay, but he hasn't done that. But you so, know, Tucker might not want to do that, so, Brian, so, because he did a whole special on January 6th that said— Well, there's other people. So he might not he, want to do there's that. There's other people. He could go to a lot of people in the media and in and, and these—just like Paul Pelosi could show the video footage from his mansion to prove that this guy broke into his house and wasn't some gay prostitute. He doesn't do it, and the reason they don't release the footage is the footage doesn't fit the story the Pelosi's are telling. You know, Ray Epps is actually doing uh, what what he said here. I was not working for the FBI at the time. Is almost like a confirmation of all the suspicions around him. I, I don't. I don't. I just don't think it would do any good because you know things. Once something gets out there in the world we live in with social media and conspiracies and all this stuff, once it gets out there, like they say, it's really hard to put the toothpaste back in the tube. Yeah. And I think it's too little, too late. He's let this go on for months and months and months. Think about this. He has allowed his grandchildren to suffer. Uh, I'm sure a lot of them have his last name. Uh, he, he has allowed them to suffer because of him, to be bullied, to be harassed because of him. And he's just now addressed. This has been going on for two years. He's just now addressing this, and he hasn't come out. What you're saying is 
could have been good, but it would have been better if he did it a year ago. Well, that was or yeah. when the first video yeah. came out instead of now. Yeah. Why has he waited so exactly. long? Something's very, very odd about this whole thing. And it's just it just opens up more questions. Well, listen, we're all out of time for today, but we will be back next time. I'm Brian Craig, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. We'll talk to you next time. Parents, grandparents, and teachers, safety is one of the most important concepts for young children to learn. Make learning safe habits fun with the illustrated children's book, Safety Seal, from author Samuel Griffin III, available on Amazon. Safety Seal is about a young seal who makes every trip an adventure. Your child will love following along with the engaging and easy-to-read story while enjoying colorful illustrations and learning the best safety tips. Safety Seal knows it's important to follow the rules that help you stay safe when you are away from home. Join Safety Seal on a school trip where following the rules also helps keep a new friend safe from a bully. This is a book your child will love to read every night. Send them off to bed with the safe habits of Safety Seal. Safety Seal from author Samuel Griffin III. Order your copy on Amazon. Available in Kindle and paperback.